It's a really chilled out, a really fresh, vibrant breakfast, a late brunch. Oh, hey folks, how's it going? Simple, quick, beautiful spring recipe today. This is, actually I got this one from the Waitrose magazine, not sponsored yet. Some spring greens, I've got a sweetheart cabbage, I kind of feel like that counts. I'm gonna throw a little bit of spinach in there, some chilies, we're gonna make a vinaigrette, it's gonna be amazing. Baked eggs, spring greens, what more could you ask at this time of year? Just some baby spinach. Probably won't use all of it. It's kind of a bit of a random addition. I picked it up uh, reduced from somewhere. I can't remember where. I got it reduced anyway, and I thought, you know, that will go great in this. So we'll, we'll walk some of that down. You see that? There you go. Uh, a sweetheart cabbage. We're going to core this and just shred it up. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Really quick to cook. This doesn't take long at all, this recipe. It's a great recipe for when you're on the go. Lunchtime or even a quick dinner in the spring is fantastic. One cabbage. For a bit of spice, we're going to make a vinaigrette, we'll need a chilli and we are going to need some garlic. I like smoked garlic. Uh, you do you. Use regular garlic if you like. Smoked garlic just adds an extra element of flavour, works really well with the eggs. It's fantastic. You should definitely give it a go. Garlic, chilli. We're going to need some frozen peas for this as well, but they're obviously staying in the freezer. First thing we'll do, we'll chop this chilli up. Super easy. We just. Go down like that, take the top off, and there's not a great deal of, uh, of seeds and membrane in this, they're not particularly hot chilies. You can get rid of that membrane if you want to, and the seeds, just because that's where all of the heat is really. There we go, get rid of those. I don't mind if a little bit stays around, but that's fine. Pop this on here and just... Okay. So you don't really want big bits in this, you just want to chop it down nice and finely. Something like that will do perfectly. Garlic, it's worth it. The original recipe said a clove. That's not enough. Two cloves. So if you're having guests over, maybe don't use two cloves, I don't know. Again, it's your kitchen, you do you. Top. And tail both of these cloves. See, because these have been smoked, that oh, you can't see that, can you? Because these have been smoked, they kind of they've got a, a softness to them. Really, really good. Super smoky. So again, we we'll just chop through them. Let's right, get these nice and fine. We're gonna speed this bit up. You mince these with a fork and a bit of salt as well if you want to. Beautiful. For the cabbage, I'm just going to core it and then slice up the leaves. Nice and thin, nice and not too fine. You don't want them sort of grated. Go in to the end of the cabbage, watching your fingers. Core out of there. Any outer leaves, if they look a bit, just check them. See if they look a bit. That's not ideal, get rid of that one. We'll give this a wash, obviously. There are a few uh, bits and bobs on it. It's a natural product. It grows in the ground. Let's take off those leaves. If you need to, you can just take a little bit more out of this core. Move those to one side for a moment. And we'll just... You don't need masses of this anyway. You've got quite a bit with the, the leaves. Pop this in a bowl out of the way for a moment. I'm just going to give these a wash. And there we go. That is your spring greens. I don't have a towel somewhere. Where's that gone? You can buy them pre-washed, obviously. Save you a bit of time. Bagged up, ready to go shredded, all that stuff. You'll get no judgment from me. Whatever you want to do. So for that vinaigrette, we need a shallot. One scallion shallot, finely chopped. We don't need the whole thing for the vinaigrette. We'll use the rest in the recipe. So just do my usual top and tail. Peeling these is a Not quite as simple as onions. But once you get in there, just make a cut down one side, you're away. There are all sorts of other tricks you can use. I've talked about them before on the channel. But this is easy enough, and we're in. 
Don't worry if you lose a little bit of the outer layers. They tend to be a little bit leathery sometimes anyway. And then we'll just finally chop this. Again, do go fine with this because you don't want any big chunks in your, certainly not in your vinaigrette. Not quite as harsh as an onion, but still, it's an allium. So little bits is the, uh, the key. Think fresh and sp springy. You know what I mean. So all we want for this is about a tablespoon of that. So that's the shallot. All of that chili, it was quite a large one, but you only live once, right? There's that. You want some salt, cooking salt's fine. About half a teaspoon of that. Caster sugar, half a teaspoon of that as well. You want some extra virgin olive oil, decent quality stuff. Two tablespoons of that. White wine vinegar, it doesn't have to be anything special. This one's just from Tesco, also not sponsored yet. The same again. A couple of tablespoons of that. So there we go, that's the vinaigrette sort of put together. We're gonna to let that just sit for five minutes or so, really start to infuse and then we'll do things to it. But for now, just pop it to one side. So that's all our prep done. I'm gonna cook on here today because quite frankly, it's easier for me than moving all the lights to cook over there. So we'll cook on here and a good time will be had by all. Two seconds. Shallow pan. I don't really have a lid for this one, but this kind of fits and it will leave enough space for the eggs to, to uh, cook. So it's fine. So we'll get this over a fairly low heat. Lid off for the moment. I'm just want a little bit of neutral oil, sunflower. You don't need much, just, I don't know, that much. So we will get the shallot. Can't have any more folks, shallot. <laughs> Straight in there. Just add just a little bit of salt. This just helps to stop the shallots from colouring and it will also start to season our dish. You don't need much. Just make sure everything's got in the oil. And we'll just let that gently cook until it's fragrant. Keep an eye on it. Okay, while that cooks, let's take a look at this. This is the vinaigrette. Been doing its thing for a little while. Now, ideally, I want some tarragon for this, but I couldn't find any in the shops. Maybe it's a seasonal thing, I don't know. So we're gonna use dried, if I've got dried. We have the dried. So we just want, I don't know how much we want, just some. Maybe that, seems reasonable. Give it a real good stir at this point. You notice how it thickens slightly? That's because it's started to emulsify. We don't want it to massively thicken. We're not looking to make a full-blown emulsion here. But that's looking great. So again, let that tarragon sort of rehydrate for a bit. It's not water, but you know what I mean. So we'll just pop it back to one side. And that will be good to go. We'll taste it beforehand, but that will be good to go when it comes time to actually serve our dish. These shots just start to colour. Things got away from me a little bit, but it's okay. We rescued it just in time. Keep them out of the centre of the pan, I think. Okay, so that's been going for sort of three minutes-ish. Let's add that garlic. And straight away, the, it changes the kitchen. It's amazing, it's just got an amazing fragrance. I just love garlic. Just make sure that we've got, again, Everything coated in a little bit of that oil. Don't let things get too hot. Just smells amazing. About 30 seconds, fine for this just until it's fragrant. That is smelling fantastic. So let's go straight in with our greens. Uh, this will wilt down, remember, so 
add a little more than it looks like you need. Didn't need quite all of it, but that's fine. Add in the cabbage first because the spinach won't take anywhere near as long. The cabbage is going to need a few extra, a little bit of extra cooking. And just give it a stir to make sure everything's combined and coated. Now bump that heat up. Don't want to colour it as such. And do keep it moving around because you really don't want that shallot that's still going to be in contact with the pan. You don't want that to burn. There's a ton of water in this. That'll keep things from drying out and burning to an extent. You do need that high heat because we want to drive that steam up and cook this before it before it becomes sort of sad and cabbagey, if that makes sense. We want that vibrancy to it, that fresh nuttiness you get with a sweetheart cabbage. starting to wilt so what I'll do now is I'll just add a handful of our spinach try and make everything coated and what we need now at this point very important do not be shy good amount of salt because otherwise this will be super bland there's a lot of vegetable a lot of water in here so I'm gonna have a really good grip of salt don't be shy with it, as I say. You'll thank me later. Make sure everything's well combined and that salt's as evenly distributed as we can make it. You can see that's looking really nice and wilty. Just a splash of water. Just cold water's fine. Maybe 50 mils a shot. Continue cooking. I will just turn that heat down slightly at this point. Now for those petit pois, frozen fine. Frozen are probably better. So just add those in. This will bring a little bit more water into the pan as well, which is perfect for what we need. And that's maybe 100 grams. And again, just stir, combine everything. You can see we've still got a fair bit of water going on in there. That's good, that's what we want. And we'll just let that all simmer and combine really nicely. Three or four minutes and it'll be perfect. Right then, so this has been going now for about three minutes. Not stirred it, I've just left it alone to do its thing. I've just bumped the heat up a little bit now just to drive off a little bit more of this water. We're almost there, we're good, we're looking good. We want some in there anyway for the steam. So at this point, I'm going to go in with a little bit more tarragon, because I love tarragon. You don't have to add tarragon if you don't want to. I want to. And I'm going to add a little bit of white pepper as well. Not much. Don't go crazy or you probably regret it. And then what we want to do, once we've stirred all that together, is just make ourselves some little holes. Four good quality large eggs. Crack those straight into our little holes. Try and work quickly so that they all cook in roughly the same amount of time. And there we go. And all we need now is for those to steam. So we'll take the lid, pop it over. All that steam will gather under there. Those eggs will cook. Take about three minutes and then we're ready to serve. One thing, do turn the heat down again a little bit at this point because we don't really want anything to be colouring too much. Medium low heat, it's just to get those eggs cooked. It's going to be amazing. And while that happens, get yourself a nice flatbread. Ooh, flatbread. These are Greek style flatbreads, just get yourself a nice flatbread. Pop it in your toaster or under the grill, a very low grill, just to warm through. And what you're looking for is for those eggs to just set to your liking obviously I won't judge but I like a runny yolk and a just set white custardy white when it comes to serving this some Greek yogurt sounds a little bit weird I get, I get it but it's not it's amazing it's really good try it that's all I have to say about that these are looking fantastic just with that jiggle that's perfect take that off the heat they will continue cooking so off comes that lid and look at those it smells amazing. So to serve, there's no need to stand on ceremony. A few good dollops of that yogurt. 
and just dot them around. Really nice acidity to proceedings, not too much, that's all you need. Some of this amazing vinaigrette. Perfect. And just drizzle this. Be generous, don't be a miser when it comes to your vinaigrette. Perfect. And there you go folks, that's all there is to it. Get yourself some flatbreads, tear a bit off, and just get in there. Look at that egg, fantastic. Salt, do add a little bit of finishing salt, especially to those eggs. Make sure you season it properly. And then just get in there. Wow, that really is fantastic. The eggs are slightly over my liking because of messing around getting thumbnails and moving things around, but it, it's, it's just absolutely delicious. That vinaigrette with the yogurt and those beautiful fresh greens with the luscious eggs. Do try it from the pan, you can serve it up on plates, you can do what you like. It's a really chilled out, but really fresh, vibrant, really tasty spring breakfast, a late brunch, a lunch, whatever meal you want, give it a go. I am going to eat the rest of it, so that's all for this one, folks. Watch this video next for something else that you might be interested in. It's good, here. Go make your own.